Welcome, welcome everybody to a new episode of Conversation for Days podcast. So this is episode nine. You know, it's me, Frankie, along with my boy Khalilo, and we got a special guest, longtime friend of mine. We've been waiting for that. You know how it is. We've been waiting for you, brother. Welcome. <laughs> How's it going? What's bro? up, guys? I'm doing great. Once, well, thank you for that great uh, introduction. Yeah, my name is Inua. Yeah. Ready to conversate with you guys, you know? Nice, nice, nice. Awesome. So we and, do. Uh, and uh, yeah, man, today we got a good topic. Uh, we're going to talk about activism in the 21st century. So nice. I feel like this is a topic that we had to talk about, especially with recent events in the last month. Like, this year has been crazy. And um, No joke. Yeah, no joke. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. uh, <laughs> crazy roller coaster. Yeah, and it, I mean it's not over yet, so you know there's still a couple. Only, of it was half time. Exactly. Yeah, half time. <laughs> it was like only half time. <laughs> but yeah, so uh, we've got a couple of questions that we know we're gonna go through, and I think the first one that we can go with is um, so when it comes to activism, I even I have a little definition. It's actually pretty you know simple and straightforward, so you know everybody can uh, understand it with no uh, big words. So uh, let's see. So the definition of activism here. So it's just the use of direct action to achieve an end, either for or against an issue. And um, yeah. I wanted to um, go through right with. So okay, we have different forms of activism. So when you think you have, and that's been existed for, I mean, since the Martin Luther King's days, with you know just peaceful uh, uh, protest, and then you also have. Um, when it comes to what else? When it comes to like in politics. That's right. I mean, even women rights and stuff like this, that's been going on since like what, 1800s, even before that? Oh, yeah. Before that. Yeah, yeah, activism has been around. <laughs> activism has been there. And when you think about it, activism, now we have this formal definition, but you know, go back, you know, millenniums, to them, activism was overthrow a government, right? It was just like, yeah. I don't like what this, I don't like what this empire, we don't like what they're doing, you know? Yeah. We're gonna actively advocate against this mm -hmm. empire and let's take it down yeah right? kick them out bring somebody that uh you know is more up to speed with the, yeah. the change that people are trying to bring about right yeah mm. yeah exactly and then you also have and i think that's been one big form of activism in you know recent years is with you can call it media activism so when it comes to in social media so i just wanted to throw you guys the first question so in your opinion is there a such as a better form of activism, or is it maybe just something where it's like um, a healthy balance of all of them together? What's your opinion about it? Mm. So is there like a special guest here? <laughs> okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm ready for this. I'm ready for this one. So, well, actually, like just to reiterate, reiterate your question: is it is is one form of activism better than another? As in, is is a peaceful protest more effective than a, a violent protest or a violent, you know, civil war as opposed to or just a media protest? Or is it like, it's, or is every one of these forms adequate for the situation? Is that yeah, what so, yeah, so okay. for me it's, it's more like, a, is there like one, like out of all of them that we just spoke about, is there one nowadays that you would think it's more effective in terms of just when you look at um, like the impact results, maybe just with how many people you can gather. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So, oh, that's a very good question. Um, <laughs> Frank, bring it so, up right off the bat. <laughs> but, yeah, no, but it's a, it's a very good question because if you look back in history, right, mm -hmm. we've all, like you said, Martin Luther King, you know, he had a peaceful protest. Mm -hmm. and then you had Malcolm X who had a very different approach. Yep. And he said, no, 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 like, we're not going to initiate the fight, but it seems that you guys are, you guys are shooting and killing us. Yeah. So we're going to, we're going to walk with our arms out you know black panther was the same way they're like if you're black go get your license and carry your weapon on you because they're killing you regardless yeah right? so you know fred hampton was like a big uh advocate for you know not a violent protest but you know be ready to, uh, we are ready to fight because you guys are killing us mm -hmm. and that was at that time right at that time period they decided that you know what we've tried your peaceful ways it didn't work we're going to take up arms you know martin luther king was like no no no. let's not use arms we gotta march with words because you can't fight fire with fire 
Yeah. And today like, we're at this high ground, eh? Yeah, right. And now we're today we're at this point where it's like social media, social media, social media, yeah. which honestly is a very, very good platform because you are able to reach not only your local community and your your city and your country, you're 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 international. Like this be a black today, we have this Black Lives Matter movement. It's worldwide, you know. You had people Sydney, Australia, right? And we know that Australia is a very racist country mm. towards the indigenous people and the black people there. Mm. And I think it's a great, but at the same time, because we're so focused on social media, you know, the the politicians, politics aren't on social media. You know, it's it's a great, well, social media is a great way to raise awareness. But at the end of the day, what happens to write policies to get, you know, your, like, your, your deputies of choice. Mm -hmm. It happens, like, at the voting booth, so who you vote. It happens at your community meetings. It happens live in person. Yeah. And because, in person, I think because people feel satisfied with, you know, sharing, posting, talking about on social media, that we're taking away a bit of the reality of things that, even though you're talking about it, unless you go out and actively do something about it in your own community, Mm -hmm. nothing will actually change because at the end of the day the people who know people who are in power know exactly what to do Mm. they know that as long as i'm in power you can talk shit about me sorry i don't know for that (laughs) story no go ahead you you can you can (laughs) you can talk badly about me all over social media hashtag look at look at trump trump is the biggest explanation of that he will yeah. talk trash for true. hours on twitter <laughs> yeah. but he knows because he knows nobody goes to the voting booth he knows the people who actually go to the voting booth are aligned with what he's kind of saying and mm-hmm. unfortunately that's what we know we saw in the 2016 elections and hopefully it doesn't happen mm-hmm. in the elections and that's my take yeah um, no that's proper that's proper and yeah we're gonna we're gonna see what happens this time around but uh mm-hmm. yeah no for sure i mean and even just to, to touch back on the, the question there, like, is there like one activist group or one group that we should all be aligned with? Or is it better to have like, um, a, 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 you know, many, many different causes, many different outlooks of what needs to be done? You know, because I mean, I feel like it's, it's nice. It's nice to have uh, like, a, it's nice to have that one group where it's like, yeah, okay, you know, the more people you have in that group, the more firepower you have, the more change you can make. But then yeah. on the other end, you know, there's a lot of reasons to be active. And uh, I feel like if, if there was a, because there's a grand scheme of things, if everyone tries to attack that grand scheme of things, you know, it's kind of like they're, they're missing all the baby steps in between. So if we have yeah. like uh, many, many different activist groups uh, with specific causes, then it's like, yeah, they're sticking to like uh, one of the baby steps. And then you accomplish that, perfect. You know, now we yeah. have this one working on, it's like, it's like having a task force, you know, in like, in like yeah. military and the police, you specify yourself to that one specific cause. Once yeah. that's done, perfect. You know, you, your sole purpose was for that cause. Now it's like, maybe yeah. you can align yourself with another one. So it's like, I don't know, if I were to answer that, I, I would probably say like, I like the idea of having many, many different activists. Yeah, groups. I, I definitely agree with that. Mm-hmm. It's, it's exactly because of that because you know i myself i identify you know as obviously i identify i'm a black canadian right? <laughs> so yeah, to yeah. me to me the black lives matter movement it directly impacts me you know mm-hmm. and you know but then there's somebody from you know the the lgbtq community and they've been fighting for their rights for for, for you know many years mm-hmm. and i don't identify with that group however mm-hmm. I, I want them to succeed because if they succeed is because they have, as a minority group, have been recognized. And therefore, let's say they, they got, you know, gay marriage is not a thing, you know, mm. you know, they fought for that, you know, we fought, you know, for, to get slavery. So there's like a priority list, you know, of which one needs more attention and needs like, you know, immediate action. Yeah. It's good that there's many, because like it's a task force. Once, once it's ready, we don't have to start from the beginning because yeah the progress is already there right you can just continue exactly. from that and build that on top of that and try to get it it's like a chain reaction though if one thing progresses faster everything else can can roll yeah. along too yeah what do you think about that frankie but i think too like we have like our own in a way like our own battles like when it comes to just as a black person like you identify more into okay with the whole black life movement 
those types of relation. But then when it comes to LGBTQ, yes, from afar, you can be like, obviously you want them to have the same right as everybody else, but it's not necessarily something that it's like in your personal life, it impacts mm-hmm. you. Like, there's people that are in those communities and for them, that's like their purpose, their battle, they have to fight. Yeah. So yeah. I think that too, like there's so many different things, issues that you can touch on, like you can't be involved in everything at once. So you kind of have to Pick your battles. Choose, yeah. Yeah, pick your battles and choose which ones really impact more for you or really yeah. you're, you care more about it. Not necessarily it means that Definitely. you care about the other things, but just that, yeah, priorities, yeah, you yeah. have to choose. And there's nothing yeah. wrong about it because it's just, that's part of, I believe, of life. It's like we, you can't expect everybody to be on the same wavelength. Same wavelength, path. yeah. Yeah, yeah. No, that just. Because we're not all homogenous, right? Yeah, yeah. Wait, yeah. We're not all the same, you know? Yeah. There's people across the globe who have who have a completely different reality yeah. than mm-hmm. us. Mm-hmm. And even though they support our movement, to them it's they don't necessarily they don't they don't feel the same way as the way I and us yeah. do about our movement because they have their own reality to see, to face and to deal with. Yeah. So yeah, yeah it's definitely good to have a multitude of okay. things. Mm-hmm. And it's 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 good that, you know. But I do believe, sorry, that uh, mm-hmm. there are more pressing and more mm. important things. That everything's important, but for example, the Black Lives Matter movement, the like the murder of George Floyd, like you know, was the initial reaction to the whole move. Not like the movement was already there, mm-hmm. but it it just like reawakened it again. Yeah, and that was the most pressing, most important, you know, headline this needs because like you know we've had it you know this mm-hmm. this needs to stop we need to see yeah. change now we have to work on it now it's like he so, was the you know, that kind of reawakened everything yeah mm-hmm. so it's good that you know to realize that yeah we have other things to fight for but you know let's put those on pause for a second yeah because like this is a humanitarian crisis in my opinion right people are literally dropping dying all day every day from and that we only see the things that get recorded that that's what trips yeah, me out the most the we have a we have a lot of recordings but imagine everything that doesn't get recorded you know 100 percent, 100 percent. yeah and like yeah you know especially about the people who like are supposed to protect and serve you know not like kill <laughs> you know i mean that's not really in their in their role description nah you know it's just like yeah yeah so when I see activism uh, or activists, you know, fighting up against that, I'm like, yeah, okay, yeah. You know, that's that's perfect. That's what that's what you guys really need to do. You know, that's what we need to do. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. So that's why like activists are a thing because they see injustice yeah. and they can't sit down and look at it. They can't just be like, ah, uh, okay, I guess you're dead now. Well, I'm just yeah, yeah. <laughs> like each, exactly. it's come to a point where you just can't keep turning your face. You can't keep just exactly. living like this in ignorance because like. Nah. that's right that's right what do you what, what do you what do you think frankie yeah and too like you, we have like so much access to information especially to and when we were like going back to the initial question about what is the more effective um type Form of, of uh, yeah activism activism i think mm-hmm. that social media or media activism it's a good it's like a good base is that it gives you the information for you to get the knowledge to know more about certain situation and mm-hmm. then from there you kind of just decide okay what am i going to be what am i going to do how am i going to be involved it's just, if it's to uh for example i don't know like for me and that would come back to we'll talk about your uh, initiative soon so there's like one thing that i said that i wanted to do was to invest more into local black businesses so i started yeah. that and then just you know buy certain things from um you know, closing stores, for example, if it's in Ottawa, Montreal. So I just gave myself. Yeah, I know you. I know you bought that hat recently. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah you know, the website. So thanks, to Inua. But uh, yeah. yeah, yeah. So I started to just do that. But I think it's just that you, know, you kind of just have to choose. Okay, what in your for yourself? What best can you do? Yeah, yeah. So I feel like that's one thing that I believe that I can just invest. You know, in more to yeah. local businesses. Someone else, it could be. Uh, I don't know. Um, like I see some people, that's a good thing where it's like, okay, we do like petitions, for example, you know, people s- share yeah. links and then you can go yeah. and, petitions and then you have like, actually you bring up a good thing about petitions and social media okay. advocacy, because uh-huh. 
we, like you said, you know, we, this is the information age. We have information on our fingertips, you know, it's right here, it's quick. And now, you know, signing a petition doesn't require you to move a centimeter. Somebody gives you a link, the email is drafted for you. You literally have to write your name and press send. It, it does <laughs> not get any simpler Remember, than that. Like it literally, I do not know how simpler it could be yeah. <laughs> to sign a petition. And that is, you know, the grace of social media. Social so you're, media like, internet. That is a power that, you know, we are able to do today that, you know, 20, 10 years ago, we couldn't do, you know? That's right. Thing. Like I remember the days where you like for someone to 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 get signatures, you had to go like face to face and ask. Yeah, yeah. That's right. That's right. <laughs> and that that is Crazy. tedious, you know. That is. That I remember. Is. I remember selling chocolate bars as a kid. Uh, <laughs> imagine that, you know, just going door to door selling right. chocolate. It's fun as a kid, you know. Yeah. But the most annoying part is getting them to sign their name. Mm -hmm. and you know their email and because you don't you don't want you have to know who's giving the money right there that's right you know? and by the 10th door you're just like ah. man can somebody just buy it all imagine this is like a petition uh, for activism so you're gonna exactly, have to explain a right? lot more every every mm -hmm. single door you're gonna have to explain exactly what you're fighting for and why yeah. you think they should help so it's like yeah, yeah. no it's a good thing like that today. yeah, yeah that today is just so very easy and the We've, we've realized that as a society and I hope people, you know, I, well, as, as we've seen, you know, people have woken up to that and yeah. it's not a, it's not a, it's not a moment. It's a movement. I like that. That's, yeah. that's, that's a slogan that's right there. there. That's nice. That slogan is there. I've been seeing it all over and it's, it's I really like it. I like it a lot. Mm -hmm. For me, I think that you know, for, for everybody of us, like, it's just, you have no excuse to be ignorant. Like you don't have to be as we call woke. Like I, I don't really care about mm -hmm. that. More just like, you just can't be ignorant. Like there's just too much information that you can, like you can't hide from. It's just, it's through your face. So you can't. Like, ig ignorance is a choice at this point, you know? Yeah. That, it's <laughs> definitely a choice. It's like, yeah. you, like, bro, you, you can Google and you don't even, before you had to Google a subject and, and you know, you would get links that are, now you literally ask Google and Google answers you. And yeah. it's like, obviously not, if you want more, Google gives you like where it got the answer from and da da da, da. Mm -hmm. But, uh, you know, everything is just so simple and so quick and easy. It's so efficient that, like you said, you can't, you can't be ignorant in 2020. That's true. Yeah, yeah. 2020 has taught you something, you know. Mm. Life is fragile and, you know, it's up to you to, you know. And we still have stay. a long way to go. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, yeah. everybody got to stay educated and, you know, keep that knowledge high. Yeah. So I think another question we could talk about and uh, related to activism is just like what defines or constitutes someone that's an activist over someone that's just maybe a supporter or someone that's for a movement. What's your opinion about that? Like, what constitute an activist? I'll give that to Khalil. Aha, all right, all right. <laughs> I mean, what constitutes an activist? I mean, it's definitely somebody that's uh, active in some type of change that that you know they feel really needs to occur. So I mean, can I can I can I interrupt you for a second? Oh, absolutely. I, I wrote I wrote down the definition right here uh, of okay, activist. Let's go, let's go. Activist, you know, <laughs> yeah. just just because like I, I it's a it's like you know a good basis on what to build on. So the yeah. definition, like the Google dictionary, information on your fingertips, you know, yeah. person who can't. Pay, a person who campaigns to bring about political or social change. There we go. That's an activist. Yeah, exactly, exactly. So, but I feel like the difference between an activist and a supporter is like, okay, the activist is the one that's actually laying down the bricks or, you know, putting down the, the, uh, the you know, the bridge, I can say, for example. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? They're actually creating that bridge that can bring people to the other side. But the, the supporters are the ones that are like, you know, using their voices to kind of like, it's kind of like, you know, media nowadays. Somebody makes a post about how something needs to change. A lot of people agree with it. So they retweet the post or they, um, they, they, they share the post. Mm -hmm. So it's like, mm -hmm. you know, both are forms of activism, but it's like you're supporting the main activist that created that post in the first place. Yeah. And without them, you know, what would yeah. there be to support, right? So, yeah, yeah I feel like so, that's the like, activist. Yeah, that I, I completely agree with that. You know, the activist, mm -hmm. there's not one type of activist, you know, there's different, there's a, a you know, a whole scan, oh. like a whole spectrum of activism yeah. and activists. 
and that's the person who like takes the lead in said subject you know yeah exactly and then the supporters is like oh i hear this person is saying this this and this and wants this to change mm-hmm. i will you know help him in the way i can so yeah. i am now supporting the activist but maybe maybe in my daily life there's something i want to change so mm-hmm. i'm going to lay it down the work i'm going to be like i want this and this to change and this is how i'm going to go about it exactly. now therefore i am an activist in my lane Yo, like, like you have everybody's an activist in their own way i guess well <laughs> if they're deciding to change something yeah. so yeah even the supporters too that's true that's true mm-hmm. that's true the supporters right. are activists in their own way yeah and i feel like if anybody is like if you're if you want to change something mm-hmm. that makes you an activist yeah if you want to see change well if you're making if you're doing the work to see the change yeah. now you're an activist Hey, that's the key word, right? You got to be active. Yeah, you have to be active. <laughs> the big, I think it's the, the big word is... Passivist. <laughs> yeah. <There we> go. <laughs> I, I think it's more about the, just the action. Like, okay, you said, okay, you want to make a change? You're doing the action to do something about it. A supporter yeah. is more that, okay, someone already done the action, but now you want to put, you want to support. It's and, like starting the fire, you know? Yeah, exactly. Make sure and you grow do that with an activist is something that, that's like, your like your life purpose something like you're working on every day as a supporter you can kind of just yes support from afar something but it's not something where you're gonna like put in necessarily the as you can say the work or the effort every day for that specific cause mm-hmm. it can be something where you know you're, you're supporting from afar but you have other things maybe other purposes that you're working on mm-hmm. Because yeah. it's true, like, uh, not everybody wants to be in the limelight or not everybody wants to, you know, step out in the spotlight and, and, and do their activism that way. A lot of people, they, you know, they rather play from the shadows, you know, whether it's like donating or supporting, because donating actually goes a long way. You know, they're yeah. going to need a lot of resources in order to back up what they're trying to change, right? So, I mean, that's a major move in activism if you're, if you're donating uh, yeah. towards a cause so i mean there's shout out to the, to those shadow workers out there <laughs> yeah, shadow, yeah. Sh- shadow workers are actually very very important and mm-hmm. you know shadow workers get criticized a lot and they're yeah. like oh you're only donating five dollars oh yeah. you're only reposting oh you're only posting a black square mm-hmm. like you're not doing enough you could and it's like it's not the amount and that, that's that's a, that's my part. and I've seen I've seen this a lot. People like to criticize what other people have done, right? They're like, mm-hmm. you can always do more, which is very much true. You can always do more, mm-hmm. but the fact that they decided to, you know, either give five cents or five dollars as a donation, yeah. repost or write a post themselves, is the act to me is if they had the willingness to do it. Because, like, I'm gonna I'm, I'm gonna bring the Black Lives Matter movement because it's just so current. You know, a lot of you know non-people of color got you know heavily criticized because they they either did very very little or they might not have done something and you know yeah i don't know if it's it's very uncomfortable to put yourself in that kind of limelight but at the end of the day if you only posted a black square on like blackout tuesday i can't Mm -hmm. criticize you anymore i can't criticize i personally can't i cannot who am i to tell you you can do more i don't know what that person's going through i don't know but you know as long as you're doing the tiniest of effort you know i i am more than happy i'm thankful for what you've done because you know if everybody you know donates if if everybody in canada 37 million people donate one dollar that's 37 million dollars you know oh, it's not the right. quantity you can right it's uh yeah yeah just a dollar that's true that's true because it's yeah. like um what's that I lost my train of thought. <laughs> but yeah, it's just a, yeah, so basically what I was trying, basically what I said is, you know, it's not the amount, mm-hmm. it's the, the thought, you know, the like with presence, it's the thought that counts, right? Yeah, exactly. And I, I just, I, it just came back to me. So, mm-hmm. so, you know, yeah, it's like somebody, you know, just posting a blackout photo or, you know, donating five cents to a dollar, you know, that's, that's still a big move when they could have done nothing. Right. So it's like, mm-hmm. you know, when it comes to that moment where maybe the, there's going to be a climactic moment where people are going to be at the cornerstone of change and they're going to actually have that, that moment where we need those people to stand up. Maybe instead of donating that five cents, once they see that, Hey, we're actually at the moment of change, shoot, let me put my foot in now, you know? Mm -hmm. So, I mean, don't, don't clown on them just for doing 
something minuscule. Yeah. If, if nobody wants yeah. to go to war, then you know, <laughs> don't let them go to war. Like, yeah. <laughs> why, like why pressure the people that are that still did something to support? It, you know what I mean? Exactly. Because mm-hmm. like that that will have a negative effect on them. You know, mm-hmm. if they're getting criticized for doing something, well, I'm not gonna do it again. Yeah. If I get criticized for if I'm if I get criticized for doing something and I get criticized for not doing something, uh, they're gonna yeah. not do anything because. Well, I'm getting criticized regardless, right? Yeah, Encourage right. the people who help. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And do you think, guys, there's a uh, certain pressure when it comes to, you know, social media, when it comes to being, you know, socially active? So if it's to, to share certain information, post, um, to show the people that, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm with you guys. Um, because I think that it's, when we talk about just the action itself, like for example, just for me, for example, like I'm not necessarily the type of person where I share a lot of what I do from day to day. So I'm kind of more just like private. But the thing is, mm-hmm. if it's something that's very important, it's something that I care about, I'm gonna, you know, like if it's to donate, if it's to invest, like I'm gonna do it. It's just, I don't have the the urge to, to go and share about it. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? Some people, they, they might do. I don't really have much problem. In my opinion, I don't necessarily take, I'm not saying social media too much. Like, I, I don't necessarily take it too seriously. I think some people, sometimes their lap is like just all surrounded by it. Yeah. But no, for me, I don't really take it too serious to the point where if I see there are people that do, like, if you do something, something where it's like, it's blending hate, then mm-hmm. that's the yeah. But if it's yeah. something as small as, oh, uh, you only posted a black square or, oh, maybe you just donated, as you said, this little amount over, you should have, mm-hmm. you know, my expectations are everybody should donate $50, for example. Mm. Yeah, I think that's mm. a bit like... Far-fetched? <laughs> yeah. like, it can go a long way, but like... I, yeah, but I feel like yeah. you're kind of like wasting your energy for mm-hmm. something like that. I think like there's bigger fish, bigger things that you could maybe, yeah. you know, criticize or talk i think Definitely. we like to criticize about a lot of things and try to like cancel but i mean it's uh, yeah, I, I, the, the people the people who criticize especially the people who criticize on social media are usually the people who they themselves haven't done much or they have they have done a certain thing and you know they go on social media to fight like a thousand different things mm-hmm. and you know those people like I said, are the people who haven't done much in the real world because social media is a great platform. It's a tool, you know, social media is a tool, but some people have their livelihood on social media, which is not my case, it's not your case. You know, like you said, you have, you know, some people, they're like Instagram influencers, you know, yeah. their job, their money requires them to be socially active. And whenever there's like a big topic, whenever there's news, to, for them to like stay active or you know stay relevant they have to post they have to do this they have to do that which is not the case for me i you know i i'm more focused on you know my actual like obviously i use social media like mm-hmm. i love it you know i love my instagram i love posting my pictures but i don't like you know people i don't vlog on it i don't because i move in i don't want to say move in silence but i move i do my thing do and thing, then i use yeah. social media to back you stay up. connected to back yeah. me up, stay connected, but it's not my foundation, right? Yeah. Exactly, exactly. I think, yeah, I think what I wanted to like kind of say just to 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 you know kind of put all that Frame. in one phrase. Yeah. And like, yeah, yeah. Is yeah. that I think just don't don't use social media to 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 kind of like determine how someone is like as their like just their personality. Like I think that sometimes just by looking at someone's profile. You can kind of just know who they are. But I, mm-hmm. as I said, I don't really take social media. I don't determine people based on their social media and what they mm-hmm. do. I really base it up, okay, like who you yeah. really are and what yeah. you do, your actions and your words face to face. But yeah. social media, yeah, like, like, nah. like if, you go, if, you, if you go on my Instagram page right now, like I don't, I post, you know, relatively frequently, but I take, like, like let's say, Let's say I went to, like, okay, I went to Spain, you know. I did two weeks in Spain, but I posted two pictures of Spain, right? And yeah. those were my two best pictures of Spain. Mm-hmm. But if I had, if, so, you know, you only get the, the highlights, the good stuff, right? You don't, you can't, and they're very superficial things. You don't get to see, you know, there was one night where I was in Spain where my flight was at 
5 a.m. and I wasn't going to rent a room because I was going to leave. So if my flight was at 5 a.m. and you know, they tell you come three hours ahead. So I wasn't going to rent a room to just leave at 2 a.m. So, you know, I bummed it out and I slept in the park, you know, I, and at 2.30 a.m. I walked to the airport. It was pretty fun, actually. I'm not going to lie. But, you know, <laughs> I, was, I, Sounds like an adventure. I didn't, I, it was an adventure, you know, me and my backpack. It was cool, but I didn't post that. I, you know, I was, I was, I was, you know, didn't shower. I was looking crusty as heck. I'm not going to post that, you know, but th- those are the realities. But um, exactly. on my Instagram, I only posted, you know, that fresh picture at the beach, right? That's right. Mm. No, that's true. That's yeah. true. <laughs> That's true. I mean, everybody wants to judge off of somebody's social media when it's it's kind of like it's like the surface material it's like i mean even like a a, a rough like a rough resume of who someone is you know if anything mm-hmm. you know they post mm-hmm. their accomplishments they post maybe like the good things that happen like how you'd never really say uh oh, you know i i always come to the work late but i'm a very hard worker you know what i mean you know <laughs> i gotta put that in a resume <laughs> exactly yeah so but it's like uh yeah no, that's exactly how it is. And even just to touch up on the, uh, the, uh, in, uh, you know, somebody trying to do or doing little for uh, social activity or activism. You know what I mean? It's like somebody, encouragement can go a long way because if somebody posted yeah. a blackout photo or they donated that five cents, yo, encourage that person. You're going to see that they're actually going to want to do more. Cause they're just like, oh, I, I, I got so much love just for donating a dollar. Like, what? So you know what I mean? Like, like well, I give, I give a dollar and I get this much love. Let me yeah. give two next time. You know, if like, it's <laughs> yeah, yeah, just yeah. Po- positive re- reinforcement, for right? Easy. Like, yeah. And, and nobody uh, wants to succumb well, to peer pressure either. So you go to peer pressure mm-hmm. and donate ten dollars. Yeah, you're doing a good thing, but you're not gonna like it. <laughs> yeah. you know what I, mean? I got forced yeah. to do it, right? Exactly, exactly. And that's the thing too is that, you know, you could easily too like that's the thing with social media is that you can easily act a certain way but it's not really you you could be socially active and be like oh yeah i'm, I'm all about the black Lives matter and you share a lot of things you express your you know your feelings and your opinions mm-hmm. and then come to find out maybe a month or two later it was actually all bullshit you were just kind of following the trend <laughs> so yeah, that's yeah. it for me that's why oh, i don't really take uh, social media so seriously because it's hard to know what are people intentions what are they looking for when they do certain things if it's mm-hmm. for uh, attention, wow. even though attention, yeah. we're kind of seeking everybody a certain intention. Maybe some yeah. are looking a, a bit more than others. I don't mind that, but it's just in terms of just like you being honest and what you're doing, what your yeah. actions and your. It's it's it's, it's so like hard. it's exactly what you said. You know, you got Blackout Tuesday. A lot of people posted it because they saw an opportunity to voice themselves. Mm-hmm. A lot of people were like, "Oh, today I wanted to post." I know this picture of me, but uh, I'm just going to post a black pic if I'm just, just because, you know, just to be safe. Right. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, so on the, on the social media, you're going to be like, ah, oh, yeah, this guy's a supporter. This guy's a real one. Bless. But in the real talk, he's just doing it. Cause, and you know, not to judge this person, you know, he's a hypothetical person, but you know, this person now is just like, he just posted a black picture. He, he may not even know what it's about. You know, he, exactly. may, he may be super exactly. ignorant. To, so you got to take a grain of, uh, take it with a grain of salt, whatever you see on social media. Yeah. And you gotta you gotta really see people in person, you know, or read read up on what they did. Yeah. And yeah, all that. All that. And one thing stuff. I'm seeing, uh, one thing I'm seeing a lot of too is like it's just people jumping to or rushing to conclusions, you know, about who someone mm-hmm. is based off of what they say or maybe even how they said it. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, public speaking, not everybody's comfortable with that, so some things might not come across the way that you know they intend to. But instead of actually, yeah. like, you know, reaching out for the truth and like contacting this person, be it in private or you know on a platform that both you guys are comfortable with. It's like, nah, man, they just, they're just, they want to dog them. They want to embarrass them. They want to show the world how stupid they are, but they're jumping to that conclusion. You know what I mean? So it's like a lot of people, they, 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 they judge too, too quickly and too easy when nothing yeah. should really be judged that absolutely. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Cause like, like who, who, who am I to judge someone else, especially over social media, right? Yeah, exactly. Like for example, like you know the nba restarted recently you know yeah um shout out to the raptors two victories anyways um, <laughs> <laughs> I, I they they've been kneeling for the national anthem and of like a handful of players have refused well i, I don't want to say refused they just they didn't kneel right and then you have a lot of backlash you know people are calling them waste like oh you're playing in a predominantly black league and you're not even kneeling da, da, da. and it's like you don't know why he's not le- kneeling right and 
there's one one coach in particular who I'm talking who I'm thinking about it. Uh, coach Popovich, I think his name is. I don't know. Greg Popovich, yeah, yeah. Yeah, him. He didn't kneel, but this guy, and not just in 2020, this guy's been an advocate, yeah. you know, for black equality, you know, for years, for gender. Who knows what else this guy has done? But you know, in that moment, you know, in these in the past couple of weeks, he hasn't kneeled. So you know, if you've only seen that game or the two games where he hasn't knelt. You're gonna think this guy's a bad. You're gonna people are gonna judge him, and he's like, oh, he's not pro black. And it's like, look at his resume. Look what this guy has done. This guy has done so much, That's much true. more than me, much more than ninety yep. percent of you guys. Off, honest, <laughs> I'm honestly speaking, right? Yeah. You can't judge a book by its cover. You can't. Nah, that should definitely not. Judge a book. And people need to re- recognize when they're actually judging a book by its cover right? instead of reading the whole book. You know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. yeah, you gotta be able to identify, you know, what's. Uh, what's coming off as judgment yeah. when you don't know all yeah. the facts and, and what's actually factual judgment. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. But I, I feel like life, it's so much better when like, you just don't like put that energy to criticize a lot of things. Yeah. Like when you're just doing what you want to do, you don't really care about what other people think. Like, it's just so like uh, liberating in a way. It's, I, I agree, but I, I kind of disagree with that as well. Cause without, without criticism, you're never going to improve, right? That's it takes it takes a person to if you know if you're if you're if you're a 5-year-old or a 10-year-old and you're drawing a picture and you know it's a stick figure thing, you know, it's very <laughs> very very primary, very, you know, yeah. simple. And you know, we always tell those kids like, "Yo, congrats, this is great." However, you know, you got to criticize it. If you want to see the kid improve, you got to criticize them, you know. Mm-hmm. If if I if me today I hand in my work and it is badly done or it needs work and the person doesn't tell me, you know, I'm going to move on to the next step in my life and somebody's going to look at me and be like, Girl, this is trash. Yeah. Criticism is, 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 criticism is not the issue. It's, it's I think it's, it's judgment that the issue and, mm-hmm. and, uh, and attacking someone, you know, That's true. being, being fa- like, cause I can, I, I'm definitely going to criticize people. I feel like. Yeah. People Structural criticism. Criticize. <laughs> yeah. 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 yeah that's, that's true. What you say, like, um, if somebody's judging somebody and they already have like, uh, um, an absolute idea of who this person is, then yeah, you might even just go off saying, man, yo, that picture is trash, man. hundred percent. Stop that. <laughs> Find something else because I've already judged yeah. and I've determined yeah. that oh, this one photo out of the millions of photos you've drawn, you're trash. Like, you know what I mean? That doesn't make sense. <laughs> that doesn't make sense. Right. Nah, so, mm-hmm. so yeah, I yeah. Know. You gotta watch that judgment. Nobody should be. Yeah judgmental at all like that's that should be something everybody needs to check themselves on <laughs> yeah. you know yeah. I mean? it, and it's like you know and it, it's it's kind of it's kind of hard because we are judgmental creatures right it's like i have my view on a variety of things and then when somebody comes with an opposing view you know we we are you know so, i'm not going to say everyone but generally people get defensive about their ideas right so, and it's good, it's good to be defensive about your idea but you also have to be open-minded, right? You can't, especially at the beginning of the argument, you can't just be like, ah, you're wrong. Yeah. This is my point of view. You're, whatever you're about to say is wrong, but I'm going to stay here and just fight it because then it's not constructive. You're not going to move anywhere. You know, you got you to gotta come in from, you know, your standpoint. But then when the other person comes with their standpoint, you have to be able to, you know, try to leave the judgment beside and try to, you know, try to see it from their point of view. And that way, if the if both parties are able to do this, you, who knows how far you know your conversation can go? Exactly, and if anything, stick to the basics too. It's all it's all in the basics. There's the how, right? There's the who. Yeah. There's the when. When when did you start thinking this way? Like you know what I mean? Yeah. Why did you start thinking this way? You're gonna find out exactly what what timeline they have in their story that brought about yeah. that type of decision to say like something yeah. so controversially outrageous. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Definitely. Definitely. But uh, yeah, so let's go ahead and uh, talk about uh, Inoa's uh, initiative. Um, yes. Yeah, Let us know what you're all about, brother. Yeah, yeah, what's what's this? <laughs> Did you like wake up one morning eating your eggs and you're like, oh, I just got an idea? Or was it <laughs> just something that you saw and you're like, you know what? This is, you know, I should be doing this. Mm-hmm. All right. So I'm going to give you the timeline of how, like, you know, uh, like how it, how it came to be. So and then I'll explain what my initiative is. Fair so enough. there was the murder of George Floyd. That, that was the, I don't know how to say it in English, you know, the mm-hmm. element that, that 
started everything was George Floyd's murder. Yeah. Okay. Now you have, and we're we in this this we're in quarantine. There's a lot of unrest and a lot of people, sure. and you know people are going on social media reposting the video, you know, and it's getting a lot of stride, a lot of movement, a lot of activity, mm-hmm. and so then I'm sitting here, you know, um, I'm reading a lot of what people are saying. I'm reading articles and seeing posts. I'm seeing this. I'm seeing that. And, you know, I have a voice too. And then I don't know if you saw Frankie, but I did a quick like video of myself. I was just like, bro, this is what I want to say. Mm-hmm. And so I did like a quick three minute video. I posted it on my Instagram and it was just me saying my piece and my view on the whole Black Lives Matter movement, because a lot of people want to support and they, they didn't know what to do. You know, they're like, how can I support? And then you, you see all these videos or in all these posts on IG saying 10 things you can do to help, things you can donate to. Da, da, da. And I was like, this is all great. This is all great. So that's when the idea hit me. It's like, okay, I have now voiced my opinion and voiced what I want to say. Mm-hmm. And I know for a fact, there's like, you know, a lot of other people who want to Right. say these things but you know for many different reasons they might be shy they don't want to post it they might they're, they might be too scared to because it's a very controversial topic right they they might be scared to say the yeah. wrong thing mm-hmm. and i'm speaking for a lot of non-black people you know, people of color you know they were the ones who you know were the most awkward and most you know unfamiliar with the topic so to them it was like uh like how do i talk about it yeah and, you know so my initiative was what i what i what i started was I wanted to do what I did, or that made a video, but have let other people talk, let other people say what they want to say. So then I, I hit up a bunch of people. I told them, okay, I want you to like, you know, express how you've been feeling and say it in like 10 seconds. You know, I don't want it to be too long. Got to be like a compilation of a lot of people. Yeah. So then they had my buddy here, Frankie, you know, he hit me up. He's like, you know, the something that I want to say is that, you know, I, I'm going in my daily life, I'm going to support black owned businesses. I'm like, great. That's perfect. That's what I need. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, I had another person say, well, I didn't tell them what to say. I was like, you decide what you want to say, because if I tell you what to say, that it's kind of losing its meaning. I just wanted to give people a platform to express themselves. Yeah. And, you know, uh, you gotta, you guys can check out the video. It's on my Instagram, it's on Facebook, it's on Twitter. Um, uh, uh, and now that, that was my initiative and it was really really fun to do mm-hmm. because uh, I, 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 kind of, I wanted to diversify I didn't want it to just be black people because as a black person and as you are guys we all understand the same thing because we live the same reality we all know what it is right or like some more than others but at the end of the day we all know what it is yeah. it's not like we gonna lead, we're going to lead the movement but at the end of the day we're always going to be the minority we need, you know, the other communities to join in. So this is why I wanted to get, you know, a lot of, you know, non-people of color to join in on this movement so that when other people of their community see that, oh, it's not just Black people. Oh, okay. They're going to feel more at ease to either voice themselves or to take action. Because at the end of the day, it has to be a collective. I think it should be led by Black people because it's our reality, but we can't shun and dismiss other communities because if we do that we're always going to be at the, at the we're always going to be in especially on this side of the on the in this side of the globe we're yeah. always going to be the minority yeah. so that's that right. was my initiative that's what i tried to do well that's what it, i did do mm-hmm. and there's 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 more to come perfect perfect we're looking forward i'm gonna stop the, uh, yeah i'm gonna stop there well i could uh, talk about it a little bit it's just, uh, it's, <laughs> okay quick quick trailer is just well now that I've had these people, you know, voice themselves, I want to bring about change in my community. Because at the end of the day, I can't change the world, but what I can change is my surrounding, or I can try to change is my surrounding in my city. And so the people who have hit, who have hit up and who, you know, responded, and other people who have seen the video who like, you know, want to raise their voice, that was the hashtag I used. Nice. Uh, I wanted to help be like, okay, now we need to take these ideas and actually bring it forth to our, to our like, you know, city councilors, our deputies, because mm-hmm. they are the ones who are going to bring it to the House of Commons. To the, like, to the, they're the ones who are actually going to legislate things because yes, we can, we can change society, but if we don't change legislation, 
10 years from now, it's not going to, it might be different. But if it's legislated, it's written, it's in black and white, boom, it's certified. You know, if Michael, Michael, sorry, if Martin Luther King, you know, didn't get everything he get, got legislated, you know, half of Black Americans, Black Canadians wouldn't be able to do what we are doing today, right? That's right, that's right. At the time, he did all that, but it's not like the next day, everything was like, ah, we're good, you know? Mm. Thanks to what he wrote and got legis and forced their hands to legislate, that today in time, we are able to, you know, have a Zoom conversation about this topic and move and not, not be scared for my life when I go outside. Yeah. So, like, that's my next, like, that was, that was like a, a op to open up the conversation and to see where I can go with that. That's proper. That's proper. I like that. Yeah, man. And that's true. Because, I mean, there's always going to be something to be active about. You know what I mean? So it's like, yeah, it, it starts with Black people, especially with, like, hum, hum, human rights and everything like that. Like, you know, Black people, they've been treated like the, the worst, you know, for such a long time. So it's like, if you, can, if you can solve that, imagine how many other problems that will arise in the future. Maybe not about Black people. It could be about any other race or any other species, you know what I mean? But then we'll, yeah. have, we'll have, like, a... a a proper way of doing that because of all the history we have and trying to solve yeah. what's going on in these days right definitely so, mm -hmm. definitely because mm -hmm. like like you just said you know black people have been at the bottom mm. for millenniums bro too, so like not, this is not you know we we say like uh, the the slave trade happened 400 years ago it's like yeah that's the american slave trade you know that's yeah <laughs> <laughs> that's the american you know the, the 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 middle easterns the arabs they enslaved the black people the europeans been enslaved. like it's, it's yeah. been going on for a while for a while Mm -hmm. And, you know, if we're able to uplift the Black community, we're able to uplift anyone on the planet. And that is That's what right. I believe. Yeah. It starts with us. Because if we're able to help us, there's no reason we can't help anybody else. Because right. you guys have neglected us for, you know, since the dawn of times. Yeah. And here we are today, you know, still asking. Stop killing us. Bro. We're just exactly. to ask. We just want to live. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, not a lot. Just stop killing us, bro. Let's exactly. Us. Send us to jail, stop. man. Like, you know, <laughs> let us come back eventually to our families and stuff like that, right? At, at least. I don't know. Like, when, when you, and it's, it's so crazy to think that we're not asking, like, for much. For a lot. We're <laughs> asking for just, like, it's leave like, us alone, bro. It's like, like it's honestly, it's just like, it's, 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 <laughs> it's, it, it, it just, I just find it mind blowing how people are so insensitive to something as simple as, you know, a light lens. I don't want to say simple, but something as so basic as like, you know, yeah. like what if one day I came up to your son and just you know, shot him because like he, Brianna Taylor, bro, she was passed out yeah, in her that, own house. That makes no and sense. And she just shot dead. Eight, eight mm -hmm. shots. Like she, you're, you're asleep. What is going on? Right. Anyways. Yeah, I, as you can tell, I can get very heated about yeah. that. Yeah, <laughs> I love that. Bring that heat. Bring that fire. You know, that's, mm -hmm. the, mm -hmm. that's what happens when you have conversations for what? Days. For days, bro. Yeah, that's what I'm days. saying. We could have conversation for days, man. Oh, man. Oh, man. That's right. That's right. Yeah, that's right. We can go on and on for, uh, for hours. But, uh, yeah. And this is definitely not the only time we're going to have you on, on, on uh, this podcast, right? So, you know. I very much enjoy it. I'm a, I'm yeah, a long time. Yeah. I'm a day one supporter. Hey. You know, I, remember, I remember you. I remember you, you. You you sent me your your first video, your first uh, podcast. Frankie sent it to me, and I was like, I bet. I was on my way to work. Your phone's in. I'm in the metro, and I'm like, okay. And then I'm here. I'm like, I want to talk. I want to talk with you guys. But it's like, I will wait my turn. I'll wait my turn. It was it wasn't the plans, you know. Like at first, like the first you can say tome or season. We're like, okay, we're trying to you know figure out just me and Khalilo. And see how it goes. And then after that, we was like, mm. man, we loved it so much. And we're like, you know what? Let's bring other people. And let's yeah, be yeah, definitely. It's like, I want to bring people from like our city, from Ottawa. So yeah. just, you know, <clears throat> the youth. And I mean, who knows in the future? We might, you know, hey, if we could get maybe like. You guys can talk about uh, your conversation for days. You know, you can have conversations about anything and everything. Anything. So exactly. It's such, it's such a, that's the, you guys picked the perfect uh, title. and. I respect it a lot. Yo, shout out to you both. Quick, yeah, quick shout out to you both. Much love, much love, man. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. <laughs> but uh, yeah, man. So I think uh, we we had a you know good long talk. Uh, yeah, we did. You said you know what you know. Well, I I I got I got one last question for the both ah, of you. Let's actually. go. Let's okay. go. Okay. Yes. Uh, yo, Frankie Khalil. All right. Are you guys activists? And if you are, what do you? active like what are you fighting for in your own life 
on your day to day? That's a good question. That's a good if, question. If if you are one, you know, you can yeah. you don't need to be one, but if you are one, like what what do you guys or what what would you want to be an activist about? I like I'll that. that. Mm-hmm. Hmm, let's see, let's see. Frank, you got something or uh you want me to go first? Yeah, you go first. You already started talking. <laughs> <laughs> fair enough, fair enough. All right, okay. If I were to be an activist about anything, because I mean, it's kind of like I find myself, um, you know, I look into, you know, who's an activist right now and like kind of like what, what's the stance that they're taking? You know, I do my research on them and everything like that. Are they worth supporting? Yes, for what reason? You know what I mean? But it's, so it's kind of like if I were to bring something to the table, I mean, it would, it would, it would, it would honestly be to push forth the idea of, uh, of like actually, you know, equality. Now how like, you know, everybody, they're an individual. So it's like, before you go off saying that you hate a race or you hate a person or, or you know, you hate a race or like a group of people, it's like, nah, check the individual that you're actually hating first and, you know, try yeah. to resolve it with them before you start hating on everyone else that has nothing to do with what you're, what you're trying to, uh, or, you know, nothing to do with the resistance that you're facing. You know what I mean? Yeah. Cause uh, a lot of people, you know, it's like, it goes back to the conclusion talk of like, they jump to a conclusion. Oh, lady gets robbed by two black men. Therefore, all black men are, you know, have to be, are, are dangerous. You know what I mean? Are, so, yeah. yeah. Boom. This person walking by, he could be talking to his buddy. Nah, let me clutch my purse. You know, let me, let me walk the other side of the street. You know what I mean? Yeah. And then those people who see her do those actions, they're going to be upset too because they're just like, oh, look at this racist lady without even mm -hmm. like questioning what, what could have happened to her. And, you know, so like one person is judging, they're, they're both judging. So that's what I'm saying. I mean, like, yeah. if, if I can just open people's eyes to like, everybody's an individual, you know what I mean? So it's like, yeah. mm. they have to be treated as such. You can't just judge somebody just because. And that's, you can't that's generalize, you can't. Yeah, I can't generalize. It, that's the dumbest yeah, thing yeah. to judge somebody on too. There's a thousand, yeah. like, no, not even thousands. There's like billions of billions of black people, billions of billions of other races and everything like that. So for somebody to be like, no, I hate all black people. I hate all white people. I'm like, yo. Like what's wrong with you? Like, what's wrong with you? you? I think you think I think you just lost a piece of your humanity. That's right. And when you're and when you're able to cast a curse upon a whole whole like ethnicity yeah. because of one incident, and yeah. you know like exactly, yeah, it's, it's mind boggling. So yeah, you'd fight for equality. I I like that a lot. Yeah, and a lot of people. Your friend? Them, oh, just to, just to chime yeah. in. A little bit no, more. No, no. Like a lot of people, they 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 find they find themselves in the situations that they that they hate the most because of the fact that you know they're judging somebody too too soon. You know what I mean? Yeah. So yeah. Yeah, that's Definitely. that's the one thing I would push for change. You know. Mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, for me, you know, I don't consider myself an activist, but if if I was one, I mean, is there such a thing as a activist when it comes to like uh, for like uh, you know businesses and just I don't know, for me, I wanted to, it would be great if I could be in a position where you can make such a change, where you can, you can see that, you know, and like the, the higher ups position, you can see more black people there, or mm -hmm. even just, you know, when we talk about like black businesses, like, you know, you refer it as a black man because it's, it's black owned. But at the same time, I want to mm -hmm. have a, a day where you can just say, okay, this is a black businesses and a lot of people can recognize it and just be like, yeah they're like one of the the best companies or you know yeah, it, that's so true like, like, uh, that is very true i just want to have like a bigger representation when it comes to black people because i think that it's something that we don't you know when it comes to just opportunities and such things like that when it comes to jobs or you know getting to the higher positions you know there's such a things as you know there's like a race uh, racial um what's the word um racial inequality uh, racial bias yeah. Bias, exactly. Bias. Like, yeah, yeah. When you know you can be more in favor to to hire someone with this name or someone that's white over someone that's black. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Even like I'm like a big I'm like a big sport person when it comes to like basketball and uh, soccer, for example. Even mm -hmm. like when you look into the landscape over there, like who are like the business owners, who are the coaches there? Like you see, when it comes to black people, like such a low percentage. I, I know I was speaking to my dad recently, and he told me that um. I think it was in Canada for like the football teams here. I think like out of like all the, um, the coaches they had, only like three out of like the 20 or 30 coaches were black. Mm -hmm. And in football, like especially football. It's a predominantly like, oh, yeah, black sport. <laughs> like, come on. 
<laughs> yeah. days where it's like, yeah, I would love to, I don't know, be involved in that and trying to make a change. Yeah, that's nice. yeah, and that would definitely go a long way because we, you know, we've always been, as a black person, you know, our your typical uh, idols are always, you know, entertainment, mm -hmm. like uh, inter people who are in the entertainment field and not really in the business field, right? Like, name me, like, you know, name me, I can name you 10 billionaires that are white, you know? How many black billionaires can I, can I name you? And even if they're not billionaires, how many 10, like, business-oriented black people can I name? There's not that many, but, you know, I can name you so many athletes, so many yeah. rappers, singers, and artists. I yeah. can name you. We're, we're always pushed, we've always been pushed to idealize those types of like uh, like people who are in those fields because just that's where we've been entertainers because <laughs> that's where we've been pushed to we don't want us to have you know capital they the, the, they don't want us to have a you know good businesses that you know can actually enrich the, the black community because mm -hmm. they wanted to keep us under their thumb uh, always so yeah. definitely that would be that is a very interesting thing to advocate and push for yeah, yeah black representation in you know positions of power and position of uh of success mm -hmm. that is not related to purely entertainment definitely mm -hmm. i like that i like yeah. that a lot all right wait what about what about you then i know you you spit out the question i want to know what's um, up <laughs> yeah. what would be your you know if you were like an activist what you um and fight for i i i i would call myself an activist because uh because of the initiative that i that I've, uh, you know, talked about earlier. Yeah. Uh, I would say, you know, I'm advocating for for social change towards, you know, black people in society, in every field, in every domain, and everything. Just to stop having this negative prejudice on black people. You know, it's, it's I just find it so twisted that you know we are framed to be, you know, the bad people, the murderers, the yeah. thieves. Always the, the, villain. The, yeah. the, we're always the villain you know and it's like the biggest villain of all <laughs> is the colonizers and we all know who the colonizers are yeah. but not to like blame them i just want them to stop looking at us as a threat and just yeah. let us like let us get those bank loans let us start our black businesses let us get unfair like no, sorry let us get fair treatment in like hospitals and healthcare systems mm. you know just let us you know be ourselves and stop like you know pushing us towards deadbeat jobs jail and just keeping us in this in a state of like they we've never had the chance to you know flourish as a as a community mm -hmm. and i'm 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 advocating you know and pushing people of my age and younger and older to chase those dreams you know like everything i just want us to succeed yeah. i want us whatever success doesn't necessarily need to be money just succeed in what you want to do in life you know and yeah. I, I, I want us to have a, at least a fair chance exactly yeah it's not whatever everyone goal, that succeeds yeah whatever goal that is it's like you can walk down that path without any kind of like prejudice or exactly. any kind of like systematic racism all of that yeah, yeah. all that i'm trying to i'm trying to you know i want i want if i ever get kids i know i want them mm -hmm. to you know there's one thing. Ooh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna close off with this personally. It was like, yeah. it, was, <laughs> it was a, it was like three, three, three or four years ago. I was uh, me and my my other friend. Uh, you know, we were both black and we were, we were at my house. We were heading out for the. Before I step out, you know, I'm talking with my mom, and then she's like, "All right, you guys have a." You know, she didn't say, "Guys, have a good night." She said, "Guys, don't forget you're black," and I'm mm -hmm. like, "Oh, like, I can't forget I'm black," but I know she was saying it because. When I go out into the streets at night, even though I am going to the market, even though I am going to a very, like, you know, a vibey place, you know, at the end of the day, you know, there's going to be police officers. She's just trying to remind me that, like, people don't perceive you as a, a, a gentleman or, you know, a good person, right, or a good Samaritan. They see a black skin. That's the first thing they see. And we all know the prejudice that comes along with just being black. So I just don't want my kids, to, if I do get kids, to grow up in a society where their parent okay. instead of telling you have a good night or have a good day she tells you don't forget you're black with like a very emphasis on black and you're just standing there like yeah, yeah. 
yeah it's, it was it, it just it set the tone for the rest of my evening right yeah yeah but yeah and that's true man that's that's something major too because it's like once it gets to that point where you're you're reminding your children of that i mean it does set the tone for what kind of society we live in what kind of world we live mm-hmm. in because i mean you know parents all they can do is you know love us and, and and try to protect us in any way possible so i mean i know it's something that maybe she wouldn't have wanted to say but it's like she still has to say it because you have to say it right yeah, exactly. she felt because like once i'm at, once i'm out that door she can't do anything anymore yeah yeah and it's it's not like she doesn't trust me she doesn't trust the world exactly exactly yeah so yeah no definitely hope that's something that's uh, hopefully that'll, that'll change you know it'll be yeah. uh, more positive uh, farewells <laughs> that, that, that's that's what i'm advocating for Thank yeah you. ah there we go yeah, yeah yeah so we can we can change those conversations so instead of you know telling our child like oh man like you should you know watch out and be careful more than just like okay like you know just you can go about your day and not think about you know what could happen to you during the day yeah like there will always be dangers there will always be like you know be safe out there you know be careful Mm -hmm. that will that's a universal thing yeah but what's not universal is don't forget you're black yeah yeah but but anyways i digress yeah (laughs) no (laughs) absolutely absolutely yeah so i mean yeah that's uh that was a touching story for sure that's that it shares a lot of insight so i mean uh Mm -hmm. you know i appreciate you for sharing that and we did talk about a lot of things today. So, uh, yeah, Frankie, you did. got something else for us? Let's see. Let's see. Man, I mean, honestly, we've uh, we've covered a lot. Yes, if we did. Any, any other, I mean, yeah, I don't know, things we wanted to bring up? Or well, I, 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 I just oh, I already oh. asked my last question. It was, it yeah, was you we, we answered that, so it's up to you. Okay, I was just going to say, I mean, like, uh, I feel like after this episode, obviously, people, are gonna, they're going to want to know more about who are you and where, where can they find you, right? So, so where oh, can yeah, they find sure. you? <laughs> oh, man, you guys, you guys can find me everywhere, man. I got my Facebook, IG, Twitter. Mm-hmm. The name is the same, Inoua Habri. Frank is going to take care of that. That's right. That's um, right. I'm, I'm addicted to Instagram, unfortunately. So uh, <laughs> if you want to actually communicate with me, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> go, ahead, you know go through Instagram. You know, you know, as a black model here in Ottawa, did you know? Oh, people? yeah. Hey, okay. I didn't even know <laughs> that. <laughs> Yeah, some of it tricks. I ain't gonna lie. It's yeah, it's oof. It's it's something else. I'm like, man, you can't prepare. Uh, for this picture, man. Like, oh man, yeah, it's priceless. Yo, we but it's like, it's like we, it's like we were seeing. It's like we were seeing earlier, man. That's my Instagram, man. I'm a <laughs> I'm I'm a nappy boy right here, but uh, <laughs> it's not on my <laughs> on the Instagram. It's only the good stuff. That's priceless. That's priceless. You gotta you gotta make that resume shine, you know? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> only the cute stuff. Fun. I might I might start take, taking some photo shoots. So if there's anyone in the city that wants to take th- photos, uh, I might. I might. Not, not where I'm gonna try to flex, huh? Is that what you're trying to say? <laughs> we're, we're, he's trying to, yo, Frankie. Like, let's go on a photo shoot, bet. Like, let's go. <laughs> no, <laughs> Lilo, let's go on a photo shoot. Yeah, bet. No, that's definitely in order. We gotta we gotta plan something like that. <laughs> let's do that. Ooh, yeah, we're gonna that's have a you good on idea. Too, so yo, I'm gonna I'm gonna let's let's invite a bunch of black youth uh-huh. and have a massive photo shoot yo actors is black okay that, I, I mean. i'm gonna i'm gonna jot that down right now man. <laughs> I, I like that idea <laughs> i remember there was like one picture with um who was it i think it was like with the like jay-z's diddy and all those like um Oh, Did like the black, things? That yeah, black ex- yeah. the black excellent brunch, the Rockefeller brunch. Yeah, thing. exactly. Yeah, yeah, and then there was yeah, like yeah, one yeah. classic photo. And when you spoke of that, I was like, yo, we could do something dope too. Like this. I have like so many like black people all together just taking like yeah. one photo. That would be something. Yeah, man. Okay. That's hype. That's hype. I'm, down. I'm hella down. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'll keep you posted on that. I'll keep you posted on that. Hey, deal, deal, deal. Man. <laughs> oh, and for you too, yeah. and for you too, thank you very much for having me on the show. Like I said, I'm a day one supporter. Very good, very great platform. I love hearing it. I love seeing your guests. And uh, no, thank you for having me on. Keep, keep doing good work, man. Black excellence. Yeah. I like that. <laughs> respect, respect, brother, man. Thank yeah, you. we're definitely going to have you around. So, yeah. Hey. You gotta keep on grinding, you know. Always, yeah. always. All right, Frankie, grind now, home. shine later. Oh, I like that. Let's have, we gotta hashtag that one. <laughs> hashtag that one. Grind now, shine later. Ooh, we. Oh, let's go. Let's go.
for sure. Yeah. For sure. Yeah, it's, it's, it's on my it's on my whiteboard at home, you know. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. it's on our whiteboards now too. <laughs> yes, yes, sir. Copywriting everything, like <laughs> my, my, yep. this is my. Let me let me put that little C. There we the, go. Like oh, copyright yeah. it. <laughs> Yay! No charge. <laughs> All right, yeah. people as well. It was another a great episode of uh, Conversation for Days podcast. And uh, I believe after this, it's our 10th episode of Tom yeah, 2, right? That's so the final, after, final episode of Tom 2. Yeah, and after that is, you know, the next chapter. So, you know, we're going to have uh, new exciting stuff, you know. So, you know, sure. we'll see I'm, how uh, the future I'm holds. waiting for that. Awesome, awesome. Excited. Oh, man. Yeah, man. Hey, get ready for more of those episodes there because we're going to have you on there too. <laughs> I, need, I need more content. I need more content. Uh, we got <laughs> Definitely, definitely. That's the rule here at Conversation for Days. When you're a guest, you're always welcome. Always. Yeah. Yep. Uh, thank you. <laughs> yeah, I like the pilot. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. That's great. All right, All right boys. You. Well, uh, take it easy. Have a good one. And uh, thanks again, you know, for joining. Yes, sir. Sure. Pleasure. All right. I'll see you guys on the next one, huh? All right. Take care. All right. Peace. Peace.